Hello again. I'd like, if I, if I may, just to briefly talk about this photograph of the World Cup 1966 win by the England squad. Um, this photograph is an iconic photo, or at least it was an iconic photograph in my memory, but it's changed. The composition of the photograph has changed. There's a similarity with the captain uh, being hoisted aloft by his teammates here, but there's more people in the picture and, and the, lay of the, la uh, the lay of the picture is different. Uh, that got me thinking about the Robbie Williams cover. Uh, UK performer Robbie Williams had an album cover in 2000 called Sing When You're Winning. And this is the, the photograph uh, from the picture, uh, for, uh, the picture from the album. Uh, and this has changed also. It now depicts a fictitious win uh, at Stamford Bridge, which is Chelsea's ground. Uh, and, and Robbie's wearing Chelsea colours, not the, uh, the, red, t the red shirts, uh, the red colours. Uh, and not holding obviously the FA, uh, the, um, the World Cup, he's now holding this FA Cup. The peculiar thing about this is uh, he's wearing Chelsea colours and he's, he's a die-hard Port Vale fan, Robbie Williams, uh, so I believe. Um, in fact, I think he was a shareholder in the club for a while, so it's peculiar that he should uh, decide to create a fictitious FA Cup win at, uh, in Chelsea colours, uh, Chelsea football colours, uh, at Stamford Bridge, the, the, the grounds of Chelsea. I find that peculiar and I think that is why I'm drawn to this particular Mandela effect because it seems strange that the origin of Robbie Williams' photograph uh, has now gone. In a similar way to George Bernard Shaw's Thinker, uh, which was a photograph taken of George Bernard Shaw the day after he'd seen, seen the uh, unveiling of the statue. The statue's changed but the photo remains and it now has no origin. In, the same, in a similar way, uh, this photograph now has no uh, particular origin. Uh, but I did find some residue on the internet and that's what I want to share because it supports my memory uh, and I want to share that with you. If I go on the internet, and this is Robbie Williams, uh, com, Robbie Williams com photo gallery where he has a page describing the photo shoot, Sing When You're Winning sleeve shoot. Cheeky Robbie portraying a streaker there uh, and he also goes on to portray fans Managers, um, uh, an iconic sort of um, uh, portrayals there of uh, all the, all the Chelsea colours um, with uh, at Stamford Ground, which is like I say, strange. He does re there's a bit of text there. He does quote definitely my best artwork. He says um, shot over three days at Stamford Bridge, the home of Chelsea Football Club. Uh, Robbie endured endless hours of makeup, costume, and scene changes. Now uh, I did email. The studio, the, the photographer for this uh, for this shoot, and ask them where they got the inspiration for this photograph because, uh, like I say, it's lost its origin, uh, but it does resonate with me as being the World Cup photograph, which it isn't. Now, going further, uh, we see that's the entry scene when you're winning uh, in Wikipedia. Not fond of Wikipedia, but there it is, uh, 28th August 2000. Uh, and indeed, this uh, the photograph I've got. There's also a BBC review um, which talks about. It does mention, in fact, let's just see. But it's not in the colours. Not in the colours of his beloved Port Vale. So it, it does mention the fact that the singer uh, is is wearing Chelsea colours, or he's he's not wearing Port Vale colours, which it does mention. Um, and it does say that he uh, instead wearing blue to suit the ground used in the shot, Chelsea's Stamford Bridge. That's just strange, isn't it? That uh, 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 such a staunch supporter of one team would decide to just wear the colours of another and, and fictitiously, fictitiously create a, an FA Cup win. That just seems strange. Like I say, the origin for me of this photograph is lost, and I think it's distorted uh, some of these. Um, some of these entries. If I go to Amazon and I find this interesting, this is the review of the album. There's an entry by uh, Ian D. Smith, September the 19th, 2000, so it's just after the album came out and he reviews the tracks. There's, a, there's coming down here where I've highlighted this, this here, uh, I'll just read it. It says, special note must be made of the fantastic booklet depicting a World Cup tournament won by a team of Robbie clones. Excuse me, so in this uh, in this review, uh, this chap's seeing it as a, a World Cup tournament, uh, which it clearly isn't now. Um, and it does mention the so yeah, that mentions the fact that it's a World Cup tournament in his mind. Um, and then when I go on to 
search Google Books, I came across this book, and it's a uh, it's classic football debates settled once and for all, volume one, and it's written by Danny Baker and Danny Kelly, uh, broadcaster before uh, broadcaster presenters. Uh, Danny Baker um, passionate about football, and in this uh, th this book that they've written, it's a World Cup edition. So looking into this book, I searched for Robbie Williams, uh, and indeed there's an entry describing Robbie Williams sing when you're winning 2000 LP so I'm just reading it out at the time he recorded sing when you're winning Port Vale fan Robbie was on the verge of becoming monstrously popular what better way to demonstrate your newfound global domination than to recreate that wonderful photograph of the England football team hoisting captain and it says booby more presumably that's a typo uh, captain Bobby Moore onto their shoulders after winning the 1966 World Cup. So it mentions the fact that he's creating the World Cup iconic, that wonderful photograph as it says there. Uh, it then says, but not content with associating himself with the finest hour of English history. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, but not content with associating himself with the finest hour of English history, Robbie thanks in some part, no doubt, to his friendship with Britpop Big Heads Oasis and to the wonders of Photoshop went further. He's being held aloft at Stamford Bridge, actually, by four of the Robbies, a victorious team comprising just one man. Um, so I, I, it, it describes the photograph. It then mentions the fact that it's at Stamford Bridge. But what's interesting is that it, it seems to say that that uh, Robbie uh, secured the photo shoot at Stamford Bridge from help uh, from his Britpop uh, friends, especially Oasis. That's just peculiar. Oasis are a Man City, uh, Man City. Uh, fans, excuse, excuse me, <clears throat> and um, clearly Photoshop was involved. But I find that strange. It's it, it, everything seems a, li a little bit uh, out of sorts with itself here. Uh, it's almost like reality is trying to correct itself. Because as I say in my memory, this photograph um, on the cover of the album, and I did see a television program or documentary, which I can't find any evidence for now, uh, showed Robbie Williams in red shirt holding the World Cup and that's supported by the review from the chap in Amazon uh, and as, there's a, this peculiar entry in this Danny Baker book or Danny Baker and Danny Kelly book um, I just wondered what do you remember do you remember this photograph as it as it's shown here or did it more resemble the, the positioning and the um, uh, the characters as shown in this mock-up uh, which is now just fictitious but uh, that was it, it. It was carefully positioned. I remember the television program. They morphed from one Robbie character to the other. And you, can, you can't do that now. Um, so I think that's important because it's like this particular, like George Bernard Shaw's photograph of the thinker. This has lost its origin. It has no uh, context now. Uh, and it would be great to know what went on in the mind of the photographer. Like I said, I did email him. Hasn't haven't had a reply. Uh, as to how he was inspired to create this shot because to actually mechanically or, or physically create that shot on the day um, would have would have taken meticulous sort of planning and posing of Robbie uh, with constant reference to the original photograph so that that whole experience by the people involved in that shot must be different in this reality if indeed that's that's what we're looking at certainly in my reality this photograph has changed and I'm interested to know if, if that resonates with anyone that this uh, World Cup 1966 uh, uh, and, uh, and the other thing is that I'm, I'm not a big football fan and that is and I remember when the television program for Robbie Williams was on I wasn't really paying much attention to it but I do remember it being on I was doing something else at the time but it was on and I kept looking at, at the screen but it was in my periphery if you like and that seems to be important in this phenomenon I'm sure major football fans will always remember this photograph because it's uh, it's resonant and it's uh, burned into their memory but it's not burned into mine it's it's alien to me this this is new uh, the composition looks wrong it's a poorer quality photograph uh, this is the composition I remember uh, with the red shirts um, with the, the cats I can't remember which ones it were uh, which ones they were but clearly there were, there's not as many uh, as there are now so does that re resonate with anyone does anyone remember seeing that pro, uh, television program? Um, can anyone explain why Oasis would help Robbie Williams get a 
photo shoot or why he would even intend to do a photo shoot at uh, a rival club's uh, grounds uh, celebrating their fictitious win. It makes no sense. I find it curious uh, and I welcome your comments. Thanks for watching.